<clears throat> oh, oh my word, I'm so sorry. I thought I was alone. That's my speech down the toilet. Um, right, uh, yeah, it's not often you look up from the toilet and find you're being watched. Actually, nearly 40% of the world can't say that. At least this is a clean and sanitary toilet, but nearly 40% of the world don't have one of those. These toilets that we take for granted are incredibly important, especially to women. To illustrate this, I'm going to tell you a story about a lady I'll call Asha. Asha got married young. She didn't have a lot of say in the matter, but she was a positive, bubbly girl. Her husband was handsome and hardworking, so she was happy. And about a year later, their first child, a little girl they called Adia, was born. Obviously, everyone was a bit disappointed it was a girl, but Asha was clearly fertile, so they hoped a boy would follow. And sure enough, after a few years, Adia had two little sisters and finally a baby brother. Everyone was delighted. Except that these four children kept getting ill, frequently coming down with diarrhea. So Asha gave up work to stay at home and look after the children, which meant her husband had to work longer shifts, and they saw less of him. Asha asked her husband if they could build a toilet in the house so that she wouldn't have to take the kids out to the fields all the time, particularly when they had diarrhea. But he said they couldn't afford one. And anyway, he didn't really understand why, when most of their friends didn't have toilets and used the fields, why they should be special. As the girls grew older, Asha advised them not to go out in the fields by day because she'd seen how the village boys used to try and spy on them. She herself didn't go out by day for fear of being watched, but she hated going at night because she was afraid of snakes and because a friend of hers had been raped when out there alone once. But still, she and her daughters held everything in all day, no matter how painful, and ventured out at night. So again, Asha asked her husband, couldn't they have a toilet so that she and her daughters could have some privacy and go any time of day or night and not have to venture out after dark? But he just couldn't justify spending money on toilet when they needed money for health care, and he needed a new phone, and they all wanted a bigger TV. And anyway, at the end of the day, it was his money, and he decided how it was spent. So the cycle of poor health continued until one terrible day when, after a prolonged case of serious diarrhea, their little boy died. Now, Asha was determined her daughters would complete their schooling so that they'd have better opportunities in life than she'd had. But they continued to fall ill, and they were falling behind at school. And then, anyway, once they were teenagers, with only one single-sex, dirty toilet at school. Every month when the girls were menstruating, they'd stay at home for a few days. But still, it was at school that the girls finally discovered why, despite the fact that they filtered all their drinking water, their poor health persisted. And it was because they and their neighbors didn't have toilets. And so the germs from the feces in the fields was carried on their feet, on their hands, by flies, on the crops, by rain, into their food, into their water supply, or straight into their mouths, and they got ill. And there were so many people living in close proximity to each other that when one person got ill, they all did. Asha is no longer happy and bubbly. And this is the situation facing 2.6 billion people today. Mothers are burying their babies. Two to three children under five die every minute of every day of diarrhea as a direct result of poor sanitation, not to mention the morbidity suffered as a result of less obvious sanitation-related illness. Mothers are losing their children for lack of something as simple as a toilet. Now, I'm going to assume that most of you are familiar with the Millennium Development Goals, which were proposed by world leaders in 2000 and covered lots of great things. And as you'd assume, amongst these goals was a target regarding water to halve the number of people without access to clean water by 2015. But what I'll assume most of you don't know is that when they put these goals together, they forgot about sanitation. There was no mention of it. It was added two years later as if it's an afterthought. Now, there's a reason why everyone forgets about sanitation all the time, but they all remember water. 
And it's because nobody wants to think about it, let alone talk about it. It's like we're all in denial, you know. Toilets are dirty, horrible things that other people have to use. And so um, we talk about it in euphemisms, saying restroom when we actually mean toilet, and saying water-related diseases when really they're sanitation and hygiene-related. And we never mention the S-word, even though it's the shit that contains all the deadly pathogens. So forgive me if I don't mince my words today, because I believe we need to learn to talk about shit so that sanitation isn't forgotten again. <laughs> we cannot afford to forget about sanitation when these Millennium Development Goals and sanitation are all completely interdependent. Tell me how are we going to end poverty when so much money is being spent on healthcare and millions of work days and school days are lost every year as a result of sanitation-related illness? How are we going to uh, end hunger when chronic diarrhea leads to malnutrition? How are we going to improve maternal health when women, pregnant or not, are holding their shit in all day and then venturing out after dark, risking accident, injury, assault, and increased exposure to illnesses like malaria to go out and find somewhere to hide? And pregnant women are more susceptible to sanitation-related diseases. Chronic diarrhea can lead to anemia, which compromises maternal health and infant health and which increases risk of death during childbirth? And how are we going to achieve universal education when kids are missing school because they're ill, or have reduced learning capacity following years of sanitation-related illness? And teenage girls are dropping out of school for lack of a private toilet. How are they going to achieve gender equality? Unfortunately, in the developing world, it's still predominantly women upon whom the majority of domestic duties fall. It's women who are taking care of home hygiene and health, women who are cooking and cleaning with dirty water, women who are dropping out of work or school to look after the sick or just to find a safe place to look after themselves. And with women at home taking care of the ill, fetching and treating water, and ending up with little bargaining power in their marriages as a result, how are they going to achieve gender equality? We cannot empower women who have to shit in public, who drop out of school for lack of private toilets, who fear every child's going to die before their fifth birthday. Women who are chained to the daily drudgery of boiling the shit out of their water, and I mean that literally. Lack of sanitation results, it, well, it results in loss of dignity and loss of comfort and is a key player in keeping women from rising out of poverty and escaping poor health and escaping inequality. And as inequality persists, so this problem that is so much more meaningful to women than men also persists because the men have the power and make the decisions and invariably overlook the importance of sanitation. Even in the Western world, we know that sanitation is more important to women. It matters more to women, and they're more impacted by lack of it. It's women who stress about how clean public toilets are and who'll queue for ages for the clean toilet rather than use the dirty one. Women who'll hold everything in rather than go somewhere unsanitary. Women who suffer constipation in the face of strange toilet options when traveling abroad. And in the developing world, where these 2.6 billion without toilets live, the women are no different. They want their comfort, their dignity, their privacy, and their health too. People need toilets if they're to rise out of poverty, achieve an education, stay well, and keep the environment clean. But it's not happening. There's been very little progress to date on the sanitation target, and it remains one of the most laggard amongst the development goals. So why is this? Well, because just as sanitation is a barrier to achieving these goals, so there are lots of barriers to achieving widespread sanitation coverage. And one of those is ignorance. People just don't realize how important toilets are. There are obvious, obvious immediate gain from eradicating malaria, from providing clean water, from educating children. But few people can see an immediate benefit from sanitation. And if the benefits aren't obvious, then who, when earning $2 a day or less, is going to save up for a toilet? 
And it's not just the ignorance of the people without the toilets. My husband loves to tell me how everyone he speaks to isn't particularly concerned that 2.6 billion don't have toilets because they can use the bush. They've done it for hundreds of years. Why are we suddenly concerned about it now? But the world's population has just exceeded 7 billion. Nature can no longer clean up after us. It's no longer OK to hide behind a tree because there aren't enough trees to hide behind. We can no longer go shit in the bush of fields because there are too many other people shitting in the same bush and fields. And it's all getting washed into the same watercourses, and we're all feeding, uh, drinking from those same watercourses. We've exceeded tipping point. So while we flush and forget, millions of people continue to die unnecessarily of a preventable problem we've known about for more than 150 years and continue to overlook. This is changing. Lack of access to safe sanitation has been declared a human right. The Gates Foundation, Clinton Foundation, World Toilet Organization, there are lots of great bodies that are recognizing the need to focus on sanitation. But it's not easy. Charities struggle to raise funds for sanitation because it's not appealing. Water's appealing. We all love pictures of happy children playing under clear running water, water we've extracted the shit out of. But nobody wants to see pictures of children squatting on toilets or even smiling beside toilets. I mean, I know how unappealing sanitation is to people because for years my friends have loved to joke about how I make a living out of designing sewers. And one day a friend of mine actually said to me, she said, I don't understand. Why would anyone choose a career in sewage? So I started my fairly defensive response. I said, we water and sanitation engineers save lives. And she interrupted me. Oh, you do water as well. Oh, that's OK. So <laughs> water's OK, sanitation isn't. And it's partly because of this pervading view that few practical solutions exist. Uh, we cannot give, and we do not want to give, 7 billion people flush toilets using valuable water to carry their waste to expensive, energy-intensive treatment plants just to separate it out again in an endless, costly cycle. We've got to realize that toilets don't all have to look like this. If only they could. Uh, in the right environment, this is just as effective. In fact, there are lots of wonderful alternatives to flush toilet, but people are so fixated with flushing being the be-all and end-all that, to date, they're not widely accepted nor yet cost-effective. So yes, there are obstacles to achieving, uh, to solving this problem. I know I've spent the best part of the last 10 years trying to solve it, and it's not easy. But we have sent people to the moon decades ago. We can split the atom. We are exploring distant planets. Surely we can find a way to give everyone on this planet a toilet. And now, I won't rest until these 2.6 billion have their toilets, and I don't want you resting either. So I'm going to leave you with this image. Because I want you all to go away and imagine having to face this every time nature calls. Because, yes, poverty, education, poor health, these are all very important issues and they need addressing. And that's why the development goals were identified and why so much energy is invested in trying to meet them. But almost all of them are exacerbated by inequality between men and women and not one of them will be solved in the absence of safe sanitation. Thank you.